that's not it either. Here we go. There you go, Coach. Looks good. All right. All right. We're good to go. All right. Um, so I'm going to do offensive line stuff tonight, and most of it's wing T, but a lot of it is can probably uh, things that relate to other offenses too. Um, now, with this, I, I did this presentation down in Newport, uh, I guess in February, um, and I had a group of kids to demonstrate uh, from Portsmouth High School. They did a great job for us and I did it before with my own kids. So obviously I don't have anybody to demonstrate and, and I don't have clips from uh, practice clips. So I'll have to do that, get some practice clips and put it on my, on my huddle. But anyway, what I thought I'd do is just kind of go through the whole thing, talk about some of the drills and stuff that we do. And then I'll throw on some, uh, I, I did put some clips, uh, just regular offense together. So I'll throw those on at the end. So um, one of you guys, maybe with about, 15 minutes left just uh, let me know and we'll, we'll throw on some film anyway uh wing t offensive line uh stance you know mo i don't know how many teams are, are using narrow stances like in, in the old days with wishbone teams and, and some of the split back for your teams and so forth so most most teams have their uh, offensive line with fairly uh you know wide stances our guys uh, we're a little bit wider than shoulder width and, and we're toe to in step uh, and basically we tell those guys to bend everywhere. Um, I don't talk about right versus left. Um, it's really not a consideration when I put kids uh, on the offensive line. Uh, if the kids are lefty, I'm not going to put them on the left or, or vice versa. Uh, actually, in our offense, it really doesn't matter because I don't know if I've ever really broke it down. But if I did, I'm guessing that, you know, uh, I, those kids are pulling to the right just as often as they're pulling to the left. So I, I don't see how it makes any difference. So I'm going to get them in the stance that they're most comfortable with. Um, we don't flop our offensive linemen. A lot of teams do. A lot of wing T teams do. And I, I understand that. I get that to some degree. Uh, I think from a learning standpoint, it might be easier. Um, but when I talked about uh, play action last week, I think I, I told everybody that we don't flop our running backs and we did and the same with our offensive line. We don't flop those and, and guys basically for the same reasons, um, you know, our guards, if, if um, one of our, our first, or, you know, our right guard, left guard, you know, during practice, they work at those spots. I don't really move those kids around. Um, the only time I might do that is if I have a sophomore who's our third guard, uh, fortunately, I haven't had to have any freshmen, but um, if I had a sophomore who's still kind of in the learning process, I might have one of those starting guards work both spots during practice. But ideally for me, you know, my, my kid who plays on the left and the kid who plays on the right, they stay there all the time during practice. And then the third kid is going to work both spots so that if some, you know, if one of those guys that starters gets hurt, he's the next guy in the game. And I kind of explained that last year with our running backs. We do the same with our offensive tackles uh, and, and so forth. Uh, for us, um, being a wing T and, and being systematic and, and, and our kids all have a rule. And, you know, when we meet in preseason and I, I, I coach the offensive line, um, when, we, when we're going through that stuff with those kids, that's always my first question. What's your rule? Uh, and when I was talking about our numbering system the other day, I was saying how you can kind of figure it out and that we tell those kids in preseason, listen, you, you have to understand the system. And uh, I think it applies to the, to the offensive line more than anybody. If, if, they, if they can make an odd even in a solid call, uh, you know, an odd our guard is, is not covered. Uh, no part of his body is covered. If part of his body is covered, we're going to call it even. If we have three guys on the line of scrimmage past the center, one side of the ball, 
it's a solid call for us. So if they recognize those three calls and they can make those three calls and they know their rule for, for all of our run game, which is what I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm, I'm not going to have time to get into the past stuff. Uh, we did a little bit with play action the other night anyway. But um, if, they, if they can recognize those defenses and they know what their rule is, they can kind of figure it out. And, again, it goes back to understanding the system. Uh, the kids that play for us, um, those offensive linemen, they have a pretty good idea what every single guy in that offensive line does uh, against each defense. In fact, uh, during preseason, once we do our install, we're kind of going back and reviewing and second time through, whatever that second week of practice, um, we get those kids up on the board and, and okay, draw up a, a 2.30 trap against an even. All right, who wants to go next? Draw up a 2.30 trap against an odd and, and so forth. Uh, during the week, we, we usually only get about four or five individual periods. Um, we don't get any on Monday because we have our JVs games and you know we do our two minute drill, which I talked about. We do a bunch of situational stuff on, on Monday. So we'll, we'll do all of our, you know, quick kicks, uh, you know, first and goal at, at the one first and, you know, coming out of your end zone at the one yard line, uh, 30 seconds left in, in, you know, in the half and the balls at midfield, all that type of stuff. So we do that situation and stuff. And then we actually do a, a look period on Monday. So we don't really have, uh, and plus half our coaches aren't there anyway. So we don't have individual periods on Monday, which really just gives us during the week, maybe be at tops four or five individual periods. So, uh, at the end of the school year, that's that's the biggest thing we try to tell our kids. Hey, listen, uh, try to get to a football camp. If you can get to a couple, that's great. Uh, at the very least, try to get to our wing T camp. Um, you know, we run a wing T camp in July. We usually have four or five schools that will come in. And uh, at wing T camp, uh, it's almost like triple sessions. We'll have three sessions on a Friday, three sessions on a Saturday. And... Um, during those sessions, we have three individual periods. So they get as many individual periods in two days of camp uh, as they would probably in two or three weeks of, of regular season. So it's really important for the kids to try to get to football camps during the summer because I think that's where they get that, that good individual stuff that a lot of times, uh, you know, we don't have time to do because we're game planning and working on different techniques and so forth. Pass game, uh, they work uh, two 20-minute periods uh, during the week which is strictly past period. Sometimes that's, you know, going over schemes and sometimes that's um, working techniques. Uh, and usually that's just on our drop back pass game. We don't do anything during those times with play action. We kind of fit that into our individual periods as well as our team periods during the week. Um, Pre-game routine for us. Um, when I first started coaching the offense online, I know, we used to, you know, when I first started at Long Meadow, I worked with the quarterbacks and, uh, you know, we would go out there early, like I think most people still do, um, with our skill kids and, and do the kicking and so forth. And our linemen are, are sitting in the locker room um, for 20 minutes or whatever. Um, after I think maybe my third or fourth year, I lost my offensive line coach. He took a head coaching job at another high school. So uh, I took over the offensive line and um, I couldn't stand sitting in the locker room <laughs> uh, while everybody else was outside. So I ended up taking the offensive line and, and to this day, we still do that. Uh, so we'll go out and we walk through a bunch of stuff and I'll talk about that in a, in a couple minutes. Wednesdays, um, the other day when I talked, I mentioned that uh, Sunday nights we watch film and we lift. Our other lifting day is Wednesday. And uh, we'll do that right after school on Wednesday. So um, practice for those, you know, we'll get to the weight room at 2.30 and we try to get the kids out for about for 3.20 out onto the field. They don't have to do a warm up or anything because they've already been in the weight room. So on those days, I have a couple coaches that take the kids to the weight room. They do the weightlifting stuff. Um, and I'll go out on the field with uh, two or three of my other coaches and, and we get the kids, the JV kids, freshman kids, whatever, uh, on the barrels. And we just kind of go through all of our assignments. Uh, wing T line splits. For us, we have two, two and a half and three foot splits. Our uh, tight end is anywhere from three to five, depending on, on what the front is and, and what technique he's getting. 
those splits vary a lot. And we talk a lot about uh, splits uh, when we're watching film and, and when we're practicing and so forth. But those are our baseline splits. Um, those, we're going to adjust those splits all the time based on, on what we're running. Uh, they tend to tighten up during a game, so you've got to kind of keep an eye on that. Um, we're going to take a little bit wider splits, obviously, when we're, you know, we have inside run, if we're running a trap or belly, or whatever, you're going to see a little bit wider splits. Or if you're going up on a linebacker or you're trapping, which um, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate here, but um, I think one of the mistakes that, that a lot of kids will make when we're running any kind of trap, whether it's a guard trap or a tackle trap, is um, – you know, if I'm the left guard and I'm going to trap somebody, the first guy past the center to my right, um, those guys have a tendency to cut the split down. And what I tell those guys is really, I would like you to widen your split. Uh, you're going to trap. And, and when you go, it gives it gives that trapper a little bit more time to see what's happening. And, and I do have a trap drill that uh, I'm going to show you guys tonight. But anyway, uh, it gives them a little bit longer to see if that guy, you know, if we are going to trap him, first of all, uh, if he has disappeared inside, maybe slanted or maybe he's lined up inside, those sorts of things. So, so don't be in such a great rush to get there. Um, take a little bit wider split, if anything. And then obviously when we're throwing the ball, whether it's play action or drop back, we're going to cut those splits down a little bit. Uh, outside run plays, uh, double teams or down blocks. So those are situations where I think our kids have a pretty good understanding of when they should cut their splits down. And I do have one drill that, that I'll show you where uh, we spend more time talking about both of those things, about splits and also about linemen off the ball. All right, uh, linemen. Uh, we want our guys off the ball as much as possible. Uh, creates a bigger neutral zone. Uh, so in practice, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get our, our center. Uh, he's got to make sure that his heels are on the line all the time. So um, when I first started Long Meadow, it, you know, the, the practice field wasn't lined the first couple of days. You know, the, those guys didn't do anything all summer. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, they got to put up the soccer nets and, and you know, do everything else. And uh, half the time our field wasn't lined and they couldn't understand how important that was for us. And, and I think the best thing that ever happened is I had one of the guys who worked maintenance uh, that ended up being a JV basketball coach for us. So I said to him, hey, listen, how would you guys like to practice with our, you know, a foul line or, or a half court line and all that type of stuff? So I, I think it finally kind of sunk in. But those centers got to um, we tell those guys, hey, every time we, we do something in practice, I want your heels on the line. Um, for the rest of those guys, that's going to put their hand on the line, which probably they're not legal uh, based on that rule. Now that alignment's going to vary. Like I said, sometimes those guys are going to cheat up or they're going to move back depending on what technique they're doing, what the play is, uh, and so forth, what our line call is. Um, okay, so uh, as far as alignment on, you know, if, if we're going to deepen if we're pulling, obviously. So if we're running buck sweep and I want those guys out there, uh, I don't want them getting caught up inside. We want them getting out in front. And so we're going to get them off the ball a little bit, which means those guys who are making down blocks. I, I think I already mentioned, they're going to be on the line a little bit. Uh, fold blocks. If, if I'm going to make, uh, if I'm blocking back on somebody, I'm going to, um, which is basically a down block technique. I'm going to uh, be a little bit tighter. Whereas if I'm going to fold, we'll fold our guards uh, with our center. Uh, we call that a Georgia block. So it's basically a guard fold. Uh, where the center will block back and the guard will come around. Uh, and a lot of our run game, that's an option for those guys. So uh, they might be just manned up on the backside, but if that guy's in a in the gap or a, he's a one technique and that guard doesn't think he can, you know, if I'm the left guard and he's in the gap or he's shaded in my inside and I don't think I can cut him off on a play going to the right, then I would make a Georgia call. So our center would block back and I would fold around. If I'm going to fold, I want to be off the ball. Uh, we have a couple plays where uh, we'll execute what we call a Texas block, which is, means the guard now would block out on a tackle, defensive tackle versus an odd defense. And uh, our offensive tackle now would fold around him. That's an option for us too on the backside. So anytime we're running a play to the right, 
if I'm the left tackle and there's a man on my inside eye or way down in the gap, uh, but not covering the guard, I'm going to make a Texas call. So the guard will block out on him and I'll fold around. So if I'm going to fold, again, he wants to be off the ball. Generally, uh, we're going to tighten that alignment in the pass game if we're, uh, you know, man blocking somebody, uh, down blocking somebody, or when we're executing a double team. Uh, drive block progression. Now, this is preseason stuff, and, you know, uh, we'll be on the sled during preseason. Once the season starts, we're, we're hardly ever on the sled. Uh, we basically use it to to teach the kids the the – the fundamentals, the body position, the footwork, and so forth. Um, but I think uh, after that preseason's over, once we get into the regular season, we, we you know, if we're doing a drive block progression, we're going to do it uh, with bags or usually on people. Um, so when we do it on the sled, basically it starts with a punch. And for us, uh, again, I, I know you guys, I'm not sure you can see me or not, but basically with our punch, you know, it's coming from inside out. Uh, our thumbs are up. Um, I have those guys close their fingers. And it's not a fist, but I but I close their knuckles so that uh, when they're making contact, uh, they're not going to get those fingers caught and, and smashed up. So basically, thumbs are up. Uh, it's inside out. We're going to put our, our hands right on the numbers, and uh, it's just a punch. So when we do that on the sled, we'll get those kids. That's the first thing we do. They'll be down on their knees, and it's just hit. Hit, hit. So they'll get three punches in, next group up. Uh, and we don't want that coming from downtown either. Basically, it's coming from the from the hips. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the punch, and we're going to include the hips. So we're still down, and now we're on our knees, uh, or still on our knees, rather. And we're going to punch, and uh, we're going to throw those hips. Uh, we get that arch in the back. So that's the next thing we would do. And we can do that. You can do that. Uh, we start on the sled. Uh, when we go to the bags, you got to teach those guys who are holding the bags to, to give a little bit with it so that, so that uh, the guys get a feel for locking those hips out and, and throwing the hips and arch in the back. Um, the next thing we're going to do is now we're in our three-point stance. And uh, it's a step, step, and a punch. And, uh, you know, we'll go with the right foot and the left foot. Uh, if the play size to my right, I'm going to step with my right foot. If the play size to my left, I'm going to step with my, my left foot. And it's a short six inch step. Uh, that's the critical step is really the second step. Um, I think with the good off linemen in high school, you don't need to have those big, big kids. Uh, I, I would rather have a kid, you know, last couple of years we've been, pretty lucky we have had some some good sized kids that, that were pretty good offensive linemen but um oftentimes we don't get those guys you know you might have 180 190 pound guard so those first two steps are, are the most important thing um and especially that second step that second foot has to get on the ground before you make contact with the defender if i take a short six inch step and that second step is also a short six inch step it's just one two punch one two punch and we're trying to get those down feet those feet down quick uh, and we talk about it all the time in practice. So when we practice it, that's exactly when I'm behind those guys. And it's, you know, stance, set, and it's one, two punch, one, two punch. Uh, so we're still, we're still working on, on, on the two, on the steps and we're working on the punch. Um, one of the things that we'll do to kind of show them how important it is to keep a wide base. Um, when we're drive blocking, if we're man on man blocking somebody, um, you know, the guys who have problems are the guys that have narrow stances. They just, you can't stay on the block. So what I'll do is I'll get those guys uh, up on the sled. Uh, I'll have them fit up, put their chest right on the pad, put their hands behind them and try to drive the chest, try to drive the sled uh, using just, just their legs. So it, it kind of shows them the importance. If you don't, if you don't do it correctly, if you don't have a nice wide stance, with your toes out slightly, you're going to fall off that sled pretty much every time. So I think it's a good way to accentuate uh, that wide stance. And then we kind of put it all together, right, left punch drive, and then left, right punch drive. Um, one of the things that, you know, we've always worked on, on, on the sled forever, uh, then on the bags, and then against men doing those drills. Um, but we didn't do it enough working against linebackers. 
you know? So uh, we wanna make sure that we do that as well. And usually we do that, the kids are holding handbags, uh, technique wise. Those first two or three steps, it depends on the depth of the linebacker, but if I'm gonna go up and block a linebacker, uh, and this is true with a regular drive block too, if I have somebody on me and, and we punch, and I talk about forming a triangle, uh, with your face mask and, and my hands. So I'm going to punch my two hands, get them on the numbers and form a triangle with my face mask. Um, I don't care uh, if your head goes right or left or whatever, if, if it's just a drive block um, and the ball's coming right at you. Uh, take him any way he wants to go. So, um, you know, we don't talk about using your head and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. You got to be real careful how you, you know, what kind of terminology you use, but uh, we're forming the triangle, wide base, and we're just gonna try to drive that guy off the ball. Now, if I've got a linebacker, I wanna get to that point, uh, but he's off the ball. So what we teach them is, hey, your first couple steps, maybe three steps, um, we want you off the ball as fast as you can, but as soon as you get within about a yard and a half of, of that linebacker, you gotta settle down uh, and make sure you have a nice wide base. And now those basically the same fundamentals that you do on that sled, you're gonna execute on a linebacker. And I use the term swallow them up. Um, and by that, I, I mean wide base. Uh, I'm gonna take him any way he wants to go, all right? Bird dogs, uh, you know, we do bird dogs. A, I learned this a long time ago. Actually, it's kind of funny. When I went to uh, Long Meadow after coaching, I was a head coach at AIC for 10 years. When I went to uh, Long Meadow, and then when I started coaching with the offensive line, I couldn't, I just couldn't understand how those guys couldn't get it. You know, we would talk about making a down block, for example. And I would say, step flat, give ground if you have to. The worst thing that can happen is we get penetration. So make sure you step flat, make sure your head's across and so forth. And, um, uh, and then we'd run a play in practice and, and the kid would step at a 45. Uh, you know, we get on the film and the kid takes, you know, his first step is poor every time. And I used to get really upset with those kids and I could never understand why. And then when I went to Long Meadow and I was teaching, believe it or not, I was teaching health and I was teaching phys ed. And uh, we used to do a dance unit and I never did dance in my life, but we did a, a line dancing unit. And, uh, you know, I had never done any of that stuff before. So I would have to go home, you know, the night before uh, and get in the mirror and do the steps and put the music on and, and do all the steps and so forth. Uh, and I wasn't very good at it, you know, especially the first year. Uh, after a year or two, I started, you know, the music would come on and basically you would do the dance without even thinking about the steps. I wouldn't even have to look at them, whatever. It's all muscle memory. And, and I realized that, you know, coaching the offensive line is really not that different. So if during the week, you know, we do bird dogs, you know, once every two weeks in an individual period, uh, they, they're not getting that muscle memory. So when we do our bird dogs, and obviously you, you, we do everything once to the right, once to the left, most of it's just the first step or the first two steps. So if I'm making a reach block, for example, to my right, I'm going to step at a 45 with my right foot. And then I'm going to take a second step where I'm going to try to split the crotch at, at, at uh, 45. So I've got to step with my play side foot at 45, split the crotch. So those are the two steps they take. Uh, if we're doing it against air, uh, if we're doing it against men or against bags, it's the same steps. But now I'm, when we make contact on that bag, they're going to swing their hips if it's a reach block. Uh, same with the down block. The down block, we're going to step flat. Uh, our head's going to come across. The inside hand, I teach him to punch on the uh, near number. And then I'm going to take my outside arm. I'm going to drive it up through his armpit. So that's a technique that we use. So again, if we're doing it against air, we're just going to step one, two, punch with that left hand and drive the right hand up. Uh, so all of those are either one or two steps. Uh, with a trap block, we're more concerned with the angle that they take and that they're getting an inside out path. So I actually have them, they'll run through the trap against air and then against bags and, and so forth. And, and then their pull steps. So, and we do have a couple, really three different types of pulls. I think for our offensive tackles, we really just have one, which is the same as our front side buck sweep pull. So it's, it's a drop step and a crossover. So they're getting 
away from the line of scrimmage on the first two steps. Um, and again, I'm sorry, there's no way for me to demonstrate this for you guys, but anyway, uh, so that, that you know, and then if backside pull, which I talked about the other night when we do waggle, uh, uh, is a flat step first, then a crossover. And then the third pull for us is when we're running jet, and that's for our guards, where they're just going to open and they're going to run. So they're going to be lined up off the ball. They're going to take a narrow split because of an outside run play. And they're just going to open that shoulder and turn and go. Um, so we'll work on those pull steps. So we do bird dogs uh, at least twice a week. And again, we'll do it on air, then we'll do it on bags. And then Friday nights, we usually do it with partners. So uh, we always do it on Thursday. So on Thursdays, uh, we're usually out on our game field, going through our kicking game first. But we, we start out uh, after we stretch. We're going to do a, a specialty period. During specialty period, that's when our offensive linemen, most of those guys are not specialists. So I'll send my centers over with the quarterbacks usually to work on something, usually shotgun or whatever, uh, in our shotgun reads uh, in the run game. And the guards and the tackles will will work with uh, one of our coaches. I work with the punters, so one of my other coaches takes those guys and, and they'll do uh, an extra individual period. On Thursdays, uh, we'll, we'll do that. So those guys will work against air, and, and they'll do bird dogs on Thursdays. Friday nights, like I said before, um, I take the, the offensive lineman out with everybody else. So we, we actually stretch as a team, which is another, another thing I never understood. Teams would go out and do their specialty period for 10 or 15 minutes. They'd be out there kicking and doing all this kind of stuff, and then they go and stretch. It, it didn't make much sense to me. But anyway, um, we do all of our stretch, and then I have two individual periods with the offensive lineman. So the first one sometimes uh, depends on, on what I think they need, but the first one's just kind of a – a walkthrough thing. So we may walk through uh, the entire inside outside run game to the right and to the left. Uh, or we might do, you know, if we haven't had a good week in my eyes, as far as pass protections and so forth, we may just run our different pass protections against every common, you know, stunt combination that we, we might get. So I'll do one of the, one or the other. And then we'll go up and uh, we'll do bird dogs. And, but basically it's with partners. So they're getting loose too. So we're, you know, we're trapping each other. We're reaching each other. We're drive blocking. We're down blocking each other and so forth. And then the last thing we do is we usually do those pull steps. So they get bird dogs at least twice a week. I think it's important just for, like I said before, the muscle memory is, is uh, huge. <clears throat> okay. Um, as I said, you know, we're not on the sled a lot. We'll, we do it during preseason. Once the season starts, and I think this is, um, I don't know if Tim's here tonight or not. I didn't see him. But um, I think for most wing T teams, as the season goes along and we get away from using the sled and the shoots and all that type of stuff, um, we have a tendency to stand up um, and play high. So once we see that happening, then, then we have to use a couple of individual periods to do that. So, um, you know, we will use the sled and the shoots occasionally, but again, that, that's usually in the middle or late in the season uh, as we start to maybe get in some bad habits of standing up because most of the time we do so much fold blocking and, and pulling and, and so forth. Um, we do one-on-ones uh, every week. It's like the highlight of the week. Tuesdays we stretch and it's the first thing we do. So we'll stretch uh, and then it's one-on-ones. And um, that's really the only full live drill that, that we do. And, and, you know, I know we're all getting away from it and you know the days of bull in the ring and all that crazy stuff are long gone, but um, you know, it's football and, and you're going to have to hit somebody. And, and um, I don't think the, the one-on-ones is a dangerous drill. You know, the way we do it, you do have to be careful. But, you know, this first group is the way people have done it for years. And, and our coaches, they each coach a position. So I'm over here with the offensive line guys, which would be my tight end and my offensive line. My defense coordinator is over here with our linebackers and our defensive linemen. And we're going one-on-ones, Oklahoma drill. Uh, our running backs, our skill guys, split ends, our extra quarterbacks, uh, they're all involved in this. We have one quarterback who hands off, uh, one running back. We have a defensive back, uh, or stock blocker rather, and we have a, a defensive back. So our secondary coach will work with a, 
the, the defensive backs, our split end coach will work with the um, stock blockers and, and so forth. So everybody has a position they're coaching. Now you do have to be careful with the one-on-ones, you know, it's a closed quarter drill. So I'm not concerned about anybody getting hurt, you know, over here. I, I don't know if I very rarely uh, see somebody even get bumped up because of such close quarters. Here is where, where you have to worry. You know, if you're going to include this as part of the drill with a stock blocker and a defender, sometimes that stock blocker is mismatched or he's just, you know, misses a block or he slips or whatever happens. So now you get a DB or who, who's, you know, free. Uh, you got to make sure you have a whistle and that that whistle blows quick. So no, you know, we don't have any of those big collisions, especially if, you know, the defender maybe gets off the block and gets a hand on that running back. And you know, this is really a drill for offensive linemen. I mean, it's great for defensive kids too, but um, let's face it, you know, the offense is going to, to win the, this drill most of the time, you know, and I'm over here widening out the bags and my defensive guys over here, tightening up the bags. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a no-win situation for those defensive guys, but it, but it's important. All right, trap and pull step. So uh, during our individual periods, uh, what we'll do is uh, after we do those one-on-ones, the next thing we do is a specialty period. So that specialty period, we, we're going to send our fullbacks, our quarterbacks, and our centers uh, are going to go work with our quarterback coach. And they're going to work on shotgun. They're going to work on shotgun reads and so forth. I have a, a coach who works with me with the offensive line. He goes over there also, and he works with the center, snapping and stepping and, and so forth. Um, so those guys get a 10-minute period of, of just uh, shotgun snapping and, and stepping, uh, and the backs are, are working on the reads, the quarterbacks and, and uh, running backs. Uh, in our case, the fullback, um, the guards and the tackles. Um, I work with the punters. So one of my other coaches takes the offensive lineman and they're working um, some different drills in to the bottom right. You see the pull steps. So what we'll do is uh, we'll have a guy with a bag here, a guy bag here. These are my right tackles, right guards, left tackles, left guards. Some guys are working both, like I said before, so they'll work both lines. And basically, this is a little bit like bird dogs because uh, it's something we're really just working on the steps and the angles and so forth. So this would be a regular pull step for us. So uh, our coach would say guards are up, and the two guards would jump up, down, set. The right guard's going to take a drop step, which is basically straight back on the midline. His second step, he's going to cross over at 45. So his first two steps, he's going to get away from the line of scrimmage because we want him to be athletic. We want him to get around um, any of those down blocks if we got any penetration. The next thing he's going to do is on this second step, when he takes that drop and that crossover, on the crossover step, this guy's eyes should be right out here uh, looking at this bag. He's going to get an inside-out path, and we teach them just to run at him. Uh, Run at him as, as fast as you can, as hard as you can. Uh, don't break down. Don't stock block. You're not a split end. Um, this guy's probably going to be littler than you are. Uh, he's going to be more athletic than you are. So let's not get into a dance with him. Um, let's just run at him. If he runs around you, your job is done. All right, because our ball carrier has cut it up. You know, these are buck sweeps and quick pitches. And, you know, you know, they're alley plays. They're not really outside run plays. So, again, drop, crossover, eyes up, inside out. Uh, and we're going to run through this guy with a flipper, almost like a trap block. And this guard's doing the same thing over here. They grab the bags. Okay, tackles, you're up. So our two tackles will step up because they do this on quick pitch. Exact same steps, exact same angle, exact same technique. All right, so, so they're working on their front side pull steps. Uh, so we might be doing a, that pull drill one day, uh, or we might be working on trap steps. So if we're working on just the, the, the steps and so forth, um, you know, the guys who play on the right side are, are over here, and the guys on the left side are over here. And they're just going to um, take a drop step, and that's a 45 it's a it's a short 45 degree step which i think is a little bit different i'm not sure how many people teach it that way but but i like it because uh it gives this guy a little bit more time to see what's happening if i'm if i'm the, the left guard and i'm going to trap to my right over here 
I'm going to take that drop step. I'm going to get inside out, similar to what we talked about over here on the pull. But I want to get an inside out angle. Uh, it's kind of a banana path. And uh, we're going to use a flipper. And we want to run through the defender. So we'll have a guy in the bag here. The first guy in line grabs a bag on, on both sides. So first two guys, and it doesn't matter if you're guard or tackle now, just getting in, into one of the lines. And we haven't switched lines. Uh, down, set, and they're going to run a trap to both sides. And basically, it's it's the footwork and the path and then the uh, the finish that, that we're, we're working on during that. Okay, sweep drill. This is similar to the waggle drill, which I actually think I have up on here next. But uh, anyway, uh, when we do the sweep drill, uh, we'll bring both guards over here. Uh, our wing back's going to be here, uh, which will be our two back. We'll have a two back holding this bag and these guys are going to work on their down block technique. So it's a flat step head and front. Same thing as our offensive linemen and tight ends. Front side guard is going to drop and cross over and, and do a kick out. Our backside guard is going to take a flat step first, same as we talked about with Waggle the other day. Then he crosses over and he's looking to get around the down block tight. So we're going to have two guys over here with bags, the two guards. So this will be the right guards. These will be the left guards. And again, some of those guys are playing both sides. So <clears throat> once in a while, we'll have this guy here. Most of the time, he's, he's the contained guy. The coach is telling him, don't let the ball get outside of you. So we're going to have him coming up the field hard, and we're going to kick him out. Backside guard sees that. He's going to turn around. He's going to get around the down block tight, look inside, and here comes the alley player. Now we'll mix this up. We'll have this guy come in here sometimes because he, he does. Uh, sometimes this, this guy just makes a mistake. He'll, he'll come inside. That front side guard sees that. They'll end up logging him. The back side guard sees it. He pulls around. Um, and then the third thing we'll do is we'll have him come up as a contain. Front side guard kicks him out. This backside alley player comes inside out but overruns it. So this backside guard can't log him. So we end up with two kickouts over here. And uh, obviously we have our ball carrier over here too, which is good for those guys too. Um, it gives them at a better feel for running the buck sweep. The, the kids that were great buck sweep guys for me, they run this, uh, the buck sweep and they're going to put their inside hand. If I'm the left halfback, I'm carrying the ball in my right hand. I'm going to take my left hand. And I'm going to put it right in this guard's hip. And I'm just following him up in the hole. Uh, so that would be our, our buck sweep drill. And obviously, we, we do it to both sides. Uh, waggle and boot drill. Um, I did go over this the other night. I don't know how many of you guys listened. Um, Mike's been putting these up on um, on YouTube anyway. So if, if you want to uh, look at this, uh, uh, um, it's up there. But basically, uh, so I'll go through it real quick. This is similar to the buck sweep drill. But now our two guards are going to work on, on their uh, front side guards rule. The steps are the same. Front side guard is drop crossover. Backside guard is flat step crossover. Uh, front side guy, guard's rule is to log the first man outside the tackle. Uh, backside guard rule is to read the front side guard's block and be the personal protector. So the right guards, the, one of them will hold this bag and I tell them mix it up. Sometimes I want you to come up the field. Sometimes I want you to just sit on the line of scrimmage. So if he sits, we're going to log him. The guard pulls around. If he gets up the field, we kick him out. The backside guard will step up. All right. It's also a good drill for your quarterbacks uh, as well. You know, if, if I do have the quarterbacks in here, we, you know, in, in this drill, we would. Um, the other night when I did play action, I, I told you that we'd like to look high, low, and then backside. So I would just signal one of these four guys. And when our quarterback comes out waggle, they just start waving their hand. And uh, that's who we throw the ball to. And then we follow the ball. So if I throw the ball to the number one guy, I go take his spot. And he'll go over here in, in the quarterback line. So that's our waggle drill. Um, fold drill. Okay. So this is the drill that, that we'll do uh, and talk a lot about. And the first couple of times we do it, we're going to take our time and, and make sure the kids understand it. So... Um, We'll put our red group out there, which would be our first unit. And, um, you know, we'll have the white group or whoever, um, black group holding the bags. And basically, we have five guys on offense. We have five guys on defense. Over here, we, you, I'll start over here to the left. Uh, over here to this side, we're going to have an even look. So we've got a guy here in a five technique. 
we get a guy here in a, in a four technique. I'm sorry, in a, a two or a three technique. Uh, we have an inside backer. On this side, we have an odd look. So we've got a tackle here who's going to be four or five. And again, we have a linebacker. So it's an even look to this side, odd look to this side. And the first couple days we do this, I'm going to talk about, okay, so left tackle. Our first thing we're going to do here is a Carolina block, which for us is a cross block, which we run on belly, uh, belly keep, uh, and a few other things. So uh, on a Carolina, all right, who's going to go first? Well, I am. So where are yeah, you going to take a wide split? I'm, yeah, I'm going to take a wide split. All right. Why? Because it's an inside run play. OK. Um, basically, he's going to take a base split. He doesn't want to go too wide. So he's going to take a base split. Uh, what's your technique? Well, I'm going to execute a down block, which I talked about a minute ago. So he's going to step flat, get his head across and so forth. Um, and I think in, in that first slide that I showed you guys, um, I there was one thing that I didn't go. I, a lot of guys ask if we shoulder block. No, we don't. Um, the closest we ever come to a shoulder block, I guess, would be on a trap where we're going to use a flipper and run inside out or on this down block. Uh, but we don't talk about shoulders. So uh, if I'm this left tackle here and I'm going to execute a down block, I'm going to step flat. All right. The, the, drawing, the uh, diagram is not great here, but I'm going to step flat. My right hand would go, go to his outside number. My left hand, I'm going to drive up to his armpit and I get my head in front. When you do that, you actually do kind of end up with your shoulder on the guy, but I never talk about it. If you, if you use that technique, it happens. Um, so anyway, uh, base split, uh, you're going first. Do you want to be tight to the ball? You want to be off the ball. I want to be tight because this guy's going to cross block. So he's up on the line. How about you? Well, base split on the, on the Carolina. Uh, my first step is a 45 degree step, open step. And then I'm coming inside out with my head inside, which for us, it's basically a trap technique. So uh, we're going to get a cross block here. Uh, I will mix this up sometimes. Uh, sometimes we'll go uh, with a reach block by this guard, which we run on belly keep pass. We run on belly keep if our quarterbacks, we're going to fake a belly and the quarterback's going to run the ball. So technique wise, it's the same, uh, that first step. The second step uh, is the same, except we're going to, our aiming point obviously is not going to be the inside shoulder. We're not turning them out. We want them logged in. So our aiming point is the outside shoulder. And as soon as he makes contact on this five technique, he's going to swing his hips to the outside to get this guy logged in because our quarterback's going to be out here somewhere. Uh, so we'll mix those two looks up. Uh, so that would be uh, a Carolina for us, cross block. Uh, next thing we're going to do is this left guard has got to hustle back and because um, he's going to run again. So he's got to go twice. So they run their Carolina, the left guard runs back and it's Georgia. So uh, a Georgia block for us is a guard fold, which we would use against an even front obviously on plays going to the right where this guy might be in the gap or one technique and we're trying to run the ball in here all right for the center it's it's a uh, down block technique um for the guard he's going to take a drop step uh and he's going to come tight around this block and up on the linebacker so we want this real tight he gets around the linebacker. Once he gets here, uh, when I talked about blocking on a linebacker, those first three steps, four steps are, you know, I'm going as fast as I can. Once I get to this linebacker, I got to settle and I got to get a wide base and I got to swallow this guy up. So that would be a Georgia block. Over here would be a Texas block. So we get an odd front. So if we got a play going over here to the left, and this guy's up, you know, inside the gap. If he's a gap player or if he's an inside four technique, uh, he's going to execute, uh, execute a down block technique. He's going to run a fold technique. So he's going to do the same thing that the guard did over here. Drop step, tight, right off his butt, all right, and then up on the linebacker. Now, when we do that drill, uh, we'll go three each. The first group's up there, and, and I do three reps. So it, it goes fast. One, and, you know, After those first two or three days of teaching, it's going to be um, stance. Yeah, set, and we run Carolina, Georgia, set, Texas, set, and I run back, Carolina, set, Georgia, set, Texas, set, 
and you know three times and those guys run over they grab the bags and the next group's up there ready to go so um you know we're working on our fold techniques and, and so forth uh trap drill all right so uh basically with a trap um you, this is something you have to practice. You can't just tell kids, okay, uh, you know, we're going to trap this guy. This is your technique. And we're going to trap this guy, the first man past the center or whatever, um, and leave it at that and then expect them to, to be able to, to do it. Um, cause there's a lot of different things that can happen here. And I know we didn't do this drill very often when I first started coaching the offensive line and we weren't very good trapping. Um, we started doing this more and more and we came better and became better and better. So basically there's four things that can happen. All right. So I get a line of guys here. They're all trappers. I get a guy here who's a tight end. Who's going to go up. I mean, a play side tackle. He's going to go up on the linebacker. And I got my, my first guy up as a trapper and these two guys hold the bags. We rotate. So this guy's going to go here. He's going to go here. He's going to go here. He goes to the end of the line. So we usually split up into two groups. So uh, one of my coaches will take, you know, the younger kids and I'll, I'll take the other guys. But basically, again, the first day or two, you get to talk through it. All right, fellas, uh, these are the four things that can happen. This guy sits here like a, like a dummy. Uh, and we, we're going to trap him just like I drew it up on the board before practice. So take your drop step, 45 degrees, inside out, um, flipper, and run through the defender. All right. What's the second thing to do? Well, maybe he's a pretty good football player and he's been taught to strike his key. He's going to ride the down block. So uh, this guy tries to release up here. He's got his hands on him. But when I go to trap him, this guy's on his backside hip. If he's on his backside hip, as I go to trap him and I see that, I'm going to make contact on his outside hip and swing my hips. And we're going to run the ball one hole wider. So there's... The second thing that can happen. The third thing that can happen is basically this guy comes inside, the ball is snapped. He comes inside uh, as the ball is snapped uh, and crosses the tackle's face. So the tackle has to block him down. So now as I go to trap, I see that and this guy is here and he's being taken down, all right, as I pull. When I see that and his head uh, he, he's across his face now, instead of on his backside hip, he's actually across his face. I'm going to pull around that. And now I'm going to block the linebacker. So in essence, we've, we switch responsibilities. And then the third thing that can happen is obviously this guy can line up on an, on an inside four technique. And, uh, in that case, we make an Indiana call. So basically, uh, that would be a lot easier than this guy slanting. So if this guy's already lined up inside, I mean, this guy just yells, Indiana, Indiana. I'm telling my buddy over here that, hey, he's lined up inside of me. I have to take him, which he will. And this guy knows that he's going to pull around and he now has the linebacker. So those are the four different things. And I have four signals that I, I give the call. So if I just do this, it, it means just sit there and, and get trapped like a dummy. If I do this, it means ride the down block. Uh, if I do this, it means slant inside and cross his face. Uh, and then if I do this, that means line up in an I-4. So, um, again, I think that's a good recognition drill for those kids. Um, how are we doing time-wise? About 10 minutes. So let me, uh, let me do this last one. Um, and then I'll throw on some video. Uh, reach one man. For us, this is... I don't know what you call, I guess this would be the wing T version of uh, scoop blocking. Um, you know, we don't scoop block at all. So for us, if we're running a jet or a rocket, uh, an outside run play um, bubble, um, you know, bubble screen that we, we called in the huddle, um, then the backside rules for these guys are reach one man. So we start here and we're going to offset the bags so that uh, they're one man removed and we're all going to execute basically a cut block on the backside. So um, I don't send these guys downfield, even though um, I know these guys aren't going to make the play uh, for us. If we're running rocket or jet or bubble, those plays don't ever cut back. Um, Buck sweep does. 
uh, quick pitch does, those plays will cut back. The good backs will actually cut it back. So these guys uh, aren't going to cut. You know, we want them downfield um, when we get that cut back. But over here, these are outside run plays. So we actually cut this guy on the line of scrimmage. Um, is this guy going to make the play on, you know, on jet? No, they're not. But the one thing that I think it does is it slows these guys down. You know, nobody likes people on their legs. So over here, uh, his step is going to be a, a first step is a 45. He's going to take a second step and then he's going to gain for, aim for the outside knee of this guy. And we do it on bags. Uh, and they're all doing the same thing. So we're going to cut to the right. Then the next group's up and, and so forth. And, and then we'll do it to the left. Um, if we have a linebacker now, if this guy is shaded on me, uh, I, I'm not going to cut him probably. I'm just going to execute a reach block. So it would be a 45 degree step and, and split the crotch. But if he's one man removed, then, then we're going to try to cut him. Uh, over here, uh, we're going to reach one man. So over here, let's say these two guys, this is my right guard. Uh, and I'm sorry, my right tackle and my left tackle. Uh, Check it. This is, <laughs> we're going to run a play to the right. So this would be my left guard and my left tackle. And we got a guy head up or an outside shade of my guard. My guard's rule is to reach one man. Well, if he's shaded, uh, I can't reach him. So I'm going to actually avoid this guy. And this guy would cut him. So in this part of it, we're working on, uh, we just stand these bags up. Nobody has to hold them because we're going to avoid these bags. So we're going to step. And then we're going to cross rip. And in the first couple of years uh, in Massachusetts, you could cut the linebackers, um, although that rule has changed now. Um, but you still have to be uh, conscious of a, of a um, chop block. Obviously, you don't want to hurt somebody. Um, you don't want to get a 15-yard penalty either. So in, in the first couple of years up here in Maine, it, it, we get called a few times. And, and those are big plays. You know, you run a – jet or rocket on first down and all of a sudden you know you're looking at first and 25. so um what i teach these guys now is if you're going to avoid this guy i'm not going to block him if you're going to avoid him i'm going to step to my right and i'm going to cross rip through with my left arm just like a defensive lineman might on an inside stunt so i'm going to step to my right i'm going to cross rip through and then i tell him i want you to turn all right, so that you are perpendicular to line of scrimmage. I want you to turn so that you're, the numbers on the back of your jersey are facing this guy. So the umpire is not going to see, you know, you, you engage with this guy at all, that you're making every effort in the world to, to avoid him because the guy over here is cutting him. So I'm going to step, cross rip, go up for the linebacker. Uh, these guys are holding the bags. When, when we say set, they're going to start moving to their left. All right, to our right, because, you know, obviously the linebacker's not going to stand there like a dummy in the game. So we're going to um, get here, cut them off, and then swallow them up. All right, so that's, in our terminology, that's what we mean by reach one man. Double teams. Uh, we're running out of time. Let me throw on a little bit of film. Okay, so uh, this first play is a double Texas. So uh, we're in the shotgun here uh, and we're running two bubbles. We're just gonna fake to the fullback. So double Texas for the center, it's basically Oklahoma drill. Now we don't want a center catching the block like this guy does. I think this was, a, this offensive line was a pretty good offensive line. This was not this past year, it was last year. And um, 
the center here is a uh, sophomore. He played as a junior this year and actually ended up being one of the better guys in the league, I think. But this is a double taxes. So our two guards are going to execute basically what amounts to a down block. Our right guard does a good job. Left guard, not bad. You know, they both got wide base. They're a little bit high, but this is early in the season. I think actually this might be a scrimmage. And our center is catching. He's going to attack. But, but our ball carrier, whether it's the fullback on, on buck series or jet series or quarterback when we're in the shotgun, um, you know, this nose guard picks a side, so it makes it pretty easy. The back's going to cut it back to the right. Tackles fold. Our left tackle, pretty good. His first step's good. He's nice and tight. The linebacker takes himself out for whatever reason. We're faking sweep the other way, so I'm not sure why he does this. But that right tackle should, or left tackle rather, should just let him go and go to the next level. Our right tackle, same thing. His technique here is pretty good. He's tight, and he does start to break down once he gets to the linebacker depth. This is the same play, but off a of jet series now. So we're going to give the ball to the fullback. And we're running this against the odd. So they're in a slant defense. So the over here, if you start, if we go right to left, our tight end just going to block on. Does a pretty good job. Swinging his hips in the hole. He was our tight end last year. That was our quarterback this year. Now our right guard does not, his first step's not great. He steps at a 45. And that guy's slanting, so it makes it difficult. He should step flat and anticipate that that would happen. The nose guard slants away, so the center just takes him where he wants to go. Our left guard, not bad. He's a little guy. He's probably 5'9", 185 pounds. He's got to stay on his block. So that would be our double Texas scheme. Trap now. This is off a jet. Gets an even front. So our center is going to execute a down block. His first step's pretty good. He knocks the DT down. Uh, our left guard was a good player for us. He takes a real good first step here. That's exactly what I want. It's a little 45 degree step. Gets inside out, head in the hole. He runs through the defender. Right tackle should be up on the linebacker. Does a nice job. And the right guard should be up on the backside backer. They both do a pretty good job. Here's a trap, but with the quarterback running the ball again, same again, same set that we ran before. So we get double, you know, two bubbles. Center's gonna block back on this. Right guard's up on the backer. Okay, he's got to use his hands more. This is our backup guard. I think our other kid was hurt this game. Or maybe the coach may have sat him down, actually, now that I think of it. Right tackle does a pretty good job. His rule is backer, but you can see where I'm, I'm not sure what the coverage is. You can't see the coverage, but uh, the outside backer here is out on the bubble, and he only got one inside backer, and our guards got him. So our, our right tackle does a pretty good job. He just goes to the third level. This is the sucker play. So we're going to false pull the front side guard against an even front uh, in that fold drill that I showed you. This would be a Georgia. So you see our center here. It's going to block back to the left. Does a nice job. His first step is good. Hands are inside. Pretty good takeoff. And our left guard drop step tight to the block up on the linebacker, settles his hips. He does a good job. Front side tackles up on the backer. Won't fall, pull the backer, gets influenced out. Sucker play again. 
So we're going to fault pull the right guard. It's an even front again. So there, DT takes himself out of the play. So our center really doesn't have to make much of a block. Right guard pulls. Right tackle should be up on the play side backer. So he doesn't know his assignment. Our left guard does a pretty good job. Again, the key to that is uh, getting some depth off the ball and coming tight to that block when you when you fold around either on a Texas or a Georgia. Here's Buck Sweep. This is quarterback Buck Sweep, actually. So our tight ends down block technique is good. Flat. First step's flat. His head should be in front, but his hand position's good. Hand on the number, outside hand, up through the armpit. I like to see his head in front. The right tackle, though, you can see what happens when you, you know, they blitz the linebacker here and run them through the B gap, and our tackle doesn't step flat. This is exactly why you have to. This linebacker is a real good player. I'm not sure he's glad he did this. Our fullback really, oof. But look, look at the depth of the guards. These two guards were good players for us. We got drop, crossover. Look at the depth. All right, so even though our, our right tackle doesn't do a great job and our wing back doesn't do a great job on the down blocks, our guards get out clean. The path is good. And this actually is a case where our front side guard logs the guy. He misses the block and the backside guard helps, but we end up bouncing it outside, which doesn't happen all that often. Same play. We're unbalanced here, so we have our right tackle is over on the left. We're in a west formation. So our left tackle is going to go up in the linebacker. He does a pretty good job settling his hips. Backer steps up, so it makes an easy block. Our left tackle's first step is pretty good. It's a little bit high coming off the ball. Sometimes when we're in a two-point stance, it's a little bit tougher for those guys to make that down block, I think. And again, our guards get real good depth. And they're looking to get around down blocks. Actually, the same thing happened. They, they end up logging. Okay, um, I guess we're out of time. So um, I don't know, Mike, if you want to open it up for questions, we can do that. Yeah, if guys have questions, go ahead and, and pop on your mics and, and ask Coach. Coach, I know I was going to ask, you talking about running maybe some more jet sweep this year. Are you going to block that with that same beat scheme? Is that what you're thinking? On the jet sweep? Yeah, out of the gun. Oh, out of the gun. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about running with the, uh, the same blocking scheme. Um, and when we went to the gun, you know, I wanted to keep our wing tee blocking schemes the same as much as possible. Um, I'm thinking about running it with like an – in, in I, I don't know if it's – you know, if we can do it or not. I, I got to see what it looks like. But uh, with like a shuffle pass. So put the wing in motion, uh, shuffle pass the ball to him, and uh, we won't pull the front side guard, though. Uh, right. But we'll offset the fullback to that side, and basically the fullback will, will replace that front side guard. Yep. So um, I'm thinking about trying to run it that way. When we reach it, we, we tried shoveling it this year, and it, it worked, worked a little bit better. So, so you shoveled it inside? Yeah, we just, you know, the quarterback catches it, and he basically just a little shovel. You know, yeah, exactly. Block and stay a little close to the line of scrimmage. And, and when we reach steam it, we do that. And then when we block it more like buck sweep and try to get the alley, we hand it off. It takes yeah. a little bit different angle so he can, you know, kind of turn his inside shoulder and get up in the alley a little bit better. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's exactly what, what we were thinking. Um, the only thing is, I think with the motion, I want to see if I can do it with uh, with flat motion and not bring them into the backfield at all because we don't bring them into the backfield with anything else. So if we're right. running, you know, anything, you know, uh, bucks, you know, anything in our offense, basically, it's with uh, flat motion. So I, I want to try running it with flat motion. I don't know if I can get the fullback out there quick enough, but I'd like to give it a shot. Yeah, we have to move them up when we do it. You know, okay. he can't be he can't be back beside the quarterback. We have to move him up a little bit in front, so yeah. he's a little bit a little bit more like an H. But yeah, um, you know, so we we made some pretty good hay doing that this year, and you know, we kind of packaged it with uh, uh, with a GT counter the other way too. So you know, we we come to the line and call it, or sometimes we'd run, you know, jet with the front side one way and then pull the the front side guard the other way, and you know, the quarterback would choose just based on what he saw. Yeah. So there's all sorts of things you can do. It's fun to mess around with. Yeah, I think you talked about that on, on one of your first clinics or first sessions that we did, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, if you have a quarterback who's, who's smart enough, you know, and, and he can he can kind of decide either pre-snap or, or sometimes even during a snap, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Fun, too. You know, fun for, the, fun for the quarterback and the kids had a good time with it. Yeah. Coach Goff, you get a question down there? Yeah, I actually got a couple of quick ones. Um, yeah. On one of your diagrams, Coach, you, you were talking about the waggle game. Yeah. Are you typically pulling both guards in your waggle game? We are. And um, I, I did the um, – actually, all I did was waggle uh, last week. So uh, you can go on YouTube and, and, and look at that. But basically, um, our rule – our, our base rule is to pull both both guards, but um, against certain looks, uh, if our center is covered and our backside pulling guard is covered, uh, we'll make a uh, a solid call, solid Bama call. So our center would block back, and our right guard would have to block down and take the zero technique, um, and we would just pull the backside guard, which for us is also boot protection. And the same thing if we get a goal line look, if we have three men on the line of scrimmage to the play side, uh, we can't pull the front side guard. So let's say it's a traditional 6-1, six, 6-2, six, whatever you want to call it. Um, our center's uncovered. He would block back again, uh, but our right guard would reach, our right tackle would reach, and we would pull just the left guard. So those are, those are calls that we would make on the line of scrimmage. Unless, you know, occasionally I'll call, you know, for us, waggle right is 286 and the opposite way is 296. Sometimes I'll call 286 solid. Um, that's usually against, you know, some teams are, you know, we played two teams this year. They were basically in a six-man front all the time. So, you know, we ran um, a lot of – we would just call solid when that happens sometimes. Uh, so. Awesome. Uh, my other questions were just – you know, hearing some of your commentary about how you conduct practices, how many days a week during the season are you in full pads? So um, on Monday we go out, um, we don't wear pads on Monday. So it's just helmets. Tuesday and Wednesday we're full pads. Thursday we wear helmets and shoulder pads. And um, that, that just goes back to, a hundred years ago where I, when I first started coaching high school football and, you know, Thursdays, we, I think we probably practice, I don't know, I can't think of a better word than harder, uh, maybe more physical on Thursdays probably than most teams would, would do. Um, but when I first started coaching high school, we'd come out on a Thursday and do the kicking game and all that stuff. And the kids thought it was like a day off. <laughs> you know, it was always our worst practice of the week. Um, so now it's like, you know, you know, I accentuate it more. So now it's, you know, we go out in helmets and shoulder pads, you know, they, they'll wear shorts if they want, but um, we wear helmets and shoulder pads. And I tell them this should be our best practice of the week. Thursday has got to be your best practice of the week. So we actually do, I mean, we don't do any one-on-ones or anything like that, but um, you know, we, and when we do our, our pass period, we go against air. So we'll have our first team going one direction, our second team going uh, 
you know, opposite direction, then our third and fourth team will go on a different field and do the same thing. And, you know, we have a script and, and we go through that. So that's against air because I don't want kids running into each other on Thursday. But we actually do, a, a you know, a, like a 30 minute look period on Thursday for, uh, on offense and probably a 15 or 20 minute look period on defense. So we actually almost like a Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. Part of it. Uh, my last uh, two part question is, um, what days of the week and how many days of the week are you in the weight room during the season? And what is your um, philosophy and reasoning for not doing much sled work during the regular season? Um, as far as the weight room, uh, we go in Sunday night and uh, we usually meet at six o'clock on Sunday and we watch film from six to seven and then we go in and we lift from seven to eight. Uh, and then we lift again on Wednesday. So we lift twice a week. It's uh, high repetitions, uh, probably a little bit lower weight. Sometimes we use, we got this from our wrestling team. We had a great wrestling program with Matt Ricks and, and those guys. I don't know, they won four or five state championships in a row. And that's back when I had Brett Gary and Jackson Howarth and those guys and Tyler. But, you know, I had a bunch of wrestlers. And uh, those guys, um, it's funny actually we had a practice on a Thursday and they came out with the helmets and shoulder pads and they had their singlets on underneath and uh, they were out at practice and and I could not believe the physical development of those kids from the waist down I mean I'm I was I was thrown back I'm like holy cow look at these kids I mean they were ripped um, so I talked with our wrestling coach and what they do the um, what do you call Bavarian bags I don't know if you're familiar with those, but they're sandbags. And uh, so we start doing that. So we do that sometimes. You can get a lot of kids through it quick. It's a grueling workout. Uh, Bulgarian bags. I mean, what did I say? Bavarian, <laughs> Bulgarian bags. Um, but that's a great workout. Um, and then the second part of oh, the sled. Um, I just, you know, hitting a, an obstacle that's not going to hit you back and it's not going to move, whatever. Uh, I just don't think you get a great feel for it. So I rather go people against people uh, when I can. And, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with, I don't know, coaching, not philosophy, but a feel for coaching. I mean, you know, sometimes your kids are tired. Sometimes they're beat up, you know, and, and you might do that instead of going against people. Other days, you know, uh, we need to go against people because, we, you know, we, we didn't do a good job or whatever. So. Um, but that's basically it. I just think it's, you don't get a great feel uh, going against a, uh, either a bag or a, or a sled that you would against going against a player. Right. So you typically play on Friday nights? We do, yeah. I think we had one Saturday game this year. We played Thornton Academy on a Saturday. Do you do anything with the guys on, on Saturday, or is that their no. people? No, we used to when I was in Massachusetts, and I, I always – it just was the biggest waste of time, I thought, ever. You know, um, Saturday morning, the kids are still sore. You know, we would practice at nine in the morning, uh, half of them are half asleep. Uh, it was just, it was a complete waste of time. So when I first came up to Maine, I, I, I was like, okay, this is, this is my chance to change this and do something different and let's see what happens. How many people would complain? Uh, we went Sunday night. I've never heard a word from anybody about, about it. You know, obviously we're not going to do it Sunday morning or afternoon. You know, with people going to church and whatnot, but Sunday night didn't seem to be a conflict for anybody. Um, and, and you got to live a little bit with, you know, kid. Hey, I, you know, my I got tickets for a Patriots game. I got, you know, a wedding or whatever. You know, you got to deal with that a little bit nowadays. So it happens as long as it's not happening every Sunday, then it becomes an issue. 